What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a special treat for the Evo. Got this off one of the uh, Evo pages. Valve cover gaskets, brand new. So I don't know if you guys had looked at the board or paid attention uh, to the first video I put out. I wanted to do a uh, Hyundai Sonata valve cover because it was aluminum and I was told that the aluminum valve covers would fit, but uh, it turns out that it doesn't. So got this off one of the Evo pages. It's an Evo 6 uh, aluminum valve cover. It's been powder coated. It looks like from what I can see, it's the uh, rivets from, uh, from factory which uh, probably means that this thing has not been uh, de-baffled when they powder coated it, which uh, is, you know, really, really bad. So in order to pop these guys off, because you need to pop these off if you're gonna sandblast it properly. The previous owner had sandblasted it, but these rivets look like they have never been taken out. So we're probably gonna find some debris on the inside of these. I'd be very surprised if uh, we did not or it's highly possible that they just uh, re-riveted uh, these little guys. So looks like maybe they did. We'll find out, we'll see what they did on the inside. Let's get to it. It's pretty simple. Just have a chisel, go up, about right there, keep it flat. Take a hammer there. Very high eye protection. You can drill them out, but don't have access to a drill press just yet, so I'm trying to get a, uh, I'm trying to get a jump start on it. So I just use a chisel blade and a hammer. That's really it. So let's see if I can get these guys. I don't plan on reusing these baffles, so it's not that big a loss to me for them to get all bent out of shape. There's definitely some type of sealing on there. Usually these come out really, really easy. As soon as you pop off the rivets, they're usually very easy to uh, take right back off. However, as you'll see, it looks like there's some type of sealant around the edges right here. And uh, it looks like the inside, at least this one isn't too bad. This one over here though, that's really bad. That's a lot of rust. It's a lot of shit that uh, you not want to have on the inside of your uh, motor, or at least what your motor is exposed to. So down the road, we'll be drilling these guys out. But the first thing that we want to do is not only just pop this guy out, but we want to get it ready, ready to get sandblasted. So the inside including, we're going to be sandblasting it. And so when we're done uh, sandblasting it and it's all nice and clean, we're going to be welding on those flanges. I might use a push-in or a press-in 10 a.m. for the rear, but definitely at least for the sides if I'm going to do both 10s. Definitely cut and weld, cut and weld. Or if I do a 10 over here and a 6 over here, I can cut and weld that one. This one I can just get as a push-in. Just have a, uh, a male 6 a.m. A 10 and a 10 in the in the rear. So when you take them out, there's not going to be uh, all this new sealant and shit. Unless it's like a brand new fucking valve cover, but looks like they have redone it. So that seal's sticking pretty good. This guy's sticking pretty good too. Even taking that chisel to it. And I don't know if uh, you can see that, but that's a nice little. Uh, line through there from the chisel so it's not wanting to go i'll figure a way to get it out and get it off and you know all the other fun shit but it's officially ready to go get sandblasted i'm going to take this to work tomorrow in the morning and then i'm going to run over to top coat in ogden and i'm going to have them sandblasted for me it's got a lot of uh some an fittings i got some line um, so I'm really stoked to unbox that. So we got some stuff from uh, Summit. 
Uh, those are the GTR coils, but for uh, for this video, I got some uh, 10 AN line, some 6 AN line, and then I got some fittings. Um, my buddy was cool enough to send me some. This is gonna be the catch can. Got it used. Um, I'm gonna be cleaning it up a little bit. I just needed to replace the uh, breather filters up top because he blew them out when he was racing. Other than that, I'd say it's a pretty solid catch can. Location's gonna be dope. I just did not wanna pay $500 for that catch can. I've always wanted one of them, but not pay 500 bucks for it. This right here is gonna be the setup for the side of the valve cover. And then this 6AN is gonna be the setup for the front of the side of the valve cover. So then those three, 10, 10, and a six. I shouldn't have any issues with the crankcase pressure. I have the uh, weld-ons too. So Earl uh, 6AN and Earl 10 ans Fabricator uh, where the valve cover is at right now is gonna be welding these on. We're gonna make some holes and then we're gonna weld them on and then it's gonna get powder coated and then I can put all that stuff together and put it on. A little gloomy day. We just got some breather filters for the new catch can. I didn't feel like ordering uh, filters from STM. So just went with to see if I can find some uh, Amazon special, uh, some K&N filters and let's see how they fit. That might be a tight fit. Let's see. Fucking right on the money. I was afraid this one might have been a little bit too big, but seems to work just great. So Definitely gonna be keeping these ones and running these ones. So what I'm gonna do is spray the metal surface with some hairspray, you know, and throw this on, let it dry. So that way there's just another seal on it to keep it from popping off. Um, I also have uh, some pre-filters coming from outerwares for these guys, since this is gonna be uh, kind of basically right underneath the hood vent. I definitely want them to be uh, covered. And what I mean by that is, you know, with a pre-filter, it's a hydrophobic filter. So it'll keep water from getting in the catch can. I don't want outside water getting in. You know, it's one thing if it's uh, coming from the valve cover uh, or like humidity. It's another if it's like actually rain and just coming into my catch can. But with this setup, I'll be able to easily drain the oil. This mounts right up on the tranny. It's a pretty solid catch can design and idea from STM. Uh, just in my opinion, not worth the 500 bucks to get one of these. So it's great to get them used. So for these little K&N filters, Outerwares actually makes pre-filters specific for these uh, filters. So I don't have to worry about rain getting inside or anything like that. So I'm gonna throw these on real fast. I made them yellow just so that way, uh, I don't know, these little accents are kind of nice. Felt like black was kind of overrated. So add a little uh, livelihood to the engine bay. It's actually not half bad keeps a lot of the uh, water out and that's what I'm really hoping for. It's that much lower in the engine bay. Uh, you know, it's right by the hood vent. I just want to be able to protect, uh, you know, what's going on on the inside. Hopefully my motor doesn't pull any uh, water. I doubt it will, but just these extra precautions that I want to take. I've already put so much money into the build in the car, so then why not? Just go a little extra. It wasn't that much more uh, for the pre-filters, you know, and I think these are going to uh, help uh, keep in the stuff that I don't want inside. So we got the valve cover back. Pretty stoked on it. 6AN, 10AN, and a 10AN. All three are welded on. Baffles have been removed, blasted. Um, I am going through another coder now. The previous coders that were doing this just, I didn't really feel like they were giving me the time of day and I had to bring this three times for them to basically blast the inside and the outside. They only did the outside one time, told me a day uh, when I brought it back. One day turns into four days and then uh, I go back. They didn't even do the inside. They redid the outside, which just baffled me. So then they redid it, I'm done. So now I'm going through another coder. The letterings are gonna be black. We're gonna lay down a layer of black and then when we do the yellow, we're basically going to shoot the yellow and then we're just going to wipe the lettering off. I'm going to cover these guys up. Uh, the new coder is going to go through it and he's going to blast it his way. So this is a real heavy grit. Flatten some areas out. Sides over here, we're going to flatten them. Up top here, I believe we're going to be flattening those out. It's going to be looking fucking mint. This valve cover looks, well, fucking perfect. Pretty stoked. Had them blast the inside as well. It's really fine. 
going to be washing that with soap and water, then hoping to get that on maybe this weekend. No, that positive. Look at you. Why you gotta be so cute, huh? Why? Derek's man. So we got these holes out, just about the size of the M5 by 0.8. I'll be cleaning out the shavings, uh, definitely taking a uh, air compressor hose to it, clean everything out, tap everything, and then uh, get it ready to put it on the car. Back home, just kind of tapping the holes right now. Uh, if you've never tapped anything before, it's pretty easy. I would highly suggest just getting something from the junkyard or something and then drilling a hole and then trying to tap it. Essentially, you just run it through tighten a little bit feel some pressure you go a little bit further you back off and you continue this process till you hit the very bottom of the hole about right there and then you bring everything back out you should be able to take your m5 by 0.8 little bolt you should be able to run it in looks like we got a whole bunch of goodies for this video I just got a package from Evo Spec. So here we have the double pumper setup. I decided to go with dual uh, 450s. A um, couple other switches. This is going to go into uh, the AM, I believe. Well, this pin has its own uh, power and ground wire. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, I decided to do the AN lines as well. Because if I'm going to do it, I want to do it once. I gotta say the quality on this looks absolutely fucking amazing. This looks wonderful. So we got one A in line. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to see this on the ground. There's a wild clover enjoying her bone. Another line. because I got some other goodies. Thank you for the pen. That is, uh, I'm gonna be using this at work. I also went and got uh, a pulley or two, you know, cause stock block, I wanna give it all the supporting mods as possible, right? So this is uh, Evo Spec Performance's uh, alternator um, tensioner mod. Uh, it basically gets rid of the OEM tensioner arm and puts this in its place. Um, the OEM tensioner arm tends to fail in the higher RPM range, so just something, just another little supporting mod just to keep, uh, you know, everything else around the motor happy. And then this is the billet uh, idler pulley. Um, it's lighter, it's pretty, it weighs nothing. Same with this, it just weighs absolutely nothing. So with that being said, gonna be deleting that tensioner arm, lighter pulleys, um, you know, it, we're gonna we're gonna be basically adding a little bit more power to the car. It's gonna feel different, especially with the clutch too. <clears throat> so essentially, in full as far as pulleys go, they're lighter. The water pump is uh, a little bit bigger to help with uh, the coolant uh, pressure. Billet idler because it's lighter, and then the alternator tensioner mod uh, to get rid of the OEM tensioner arm because those tend to fail at higher RPMs. Because I will be spending time in the higher RPM range, this stuff is gonna be fucking sick. I'm totally stoked on it. And Dan even threw in a belt, the Gates K060569 for all my modifications, thank you. I gotta tell you guys, this is, uh, this is quality right here. What is it, Clover? That's some good shit right there. Here we are at Forbidden Street Fab. Just boys shot and shit rolling. Relax, we just had a bunch of cars roll out. 
SRT, another Evo, another Evo. Um, they've been doing a lot to this bitch. The actually the reason why it was sputtering because of fuel pressure. 11 PSI at idle is not exactly great, so uh, that's a problem. So we may end up, uh, we, may be, uh, we may be throwing in this uh, double pumper setup, uh, but we got the A in lines for the valve cover, and then we got the uh, catch can that we're gonna be setting up as well. That's all waxed and good. We're going to uh, hammer out these baffles. We're gonna put them in there, close all up. Gonna be replacing the lifters shortly, and then uh, we'll be doing the pulleys too. So the reason we're taking these baffles out <clears throat> because these ones the one of the previous powder coating companies blasted it i had them blast it just to clean it up but they use a really a really shitty material so i don't like the way it feels so i'm just going to reuse these ones if i can uh which shouldn't be an issue and so then uh, i'm just going to hammer these out and then uh throw them in there All the nasty shit. Bolts, baffles, I'm gonna clean those. And then uh, we're gonna throw them in there. Yeah, with uh, some blue Loctite, of course. All right. We got the baffles in. Everything's gonna go fucking great. Um, so I'm waiting on that. Threw some wax on here. Just some, uh, some McGuire's quick wax. Spray it on, wiped it off, it's good to go. Um, smooth little feel. It's gonna be great going on the car. And then I've got my, um, the ITM lifters. I'm gonna be uh, bleeding these. So when you bleed them, you want them to compress, but when they come out of the box, they're uh, pretty hard. How you do that is uh, get a little Allen key inside and I'll show you how to do that real fast. So this is the lifter straight out of the package. If you press on them, they're gonna be uh, pressurized. So they're not gonna really move, right? These ones over here, I bled. I'm able to move them by hand. So what you do, little Allen key going to the top you're gonna find a little valve in there you're gonna let it feel So I bled everything. I'm gonna go uh, replace those lifters. That way I just know what cam load did what and what lifter I replaced. Cause I'm not taking the cams out, so. We're gonna see if I can get them out. We still have the uh, cams in. I'm not gonna show how we're doing it, but um, there's plenty of videos on it. Just know that we're getting it and uh, it's gone. So when you do it this way, make sure you get uh, plenty of blood in there. But uh, the way we've been doing it, we've been taking them without the uh, cams out. This little rocker arm is going to go in here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put the butt of my screwdriver right here. Give them a little love tap. There we go. So that is how uh, 
That's how you swap out your lifters. Uh, we're going to reseal everything, put on new gaskets on the valve cover, throw that uh, with some gasket maker, make sure that everything is going well. And then in the morning, we're gonna come back and do the pulleys. We're probably gonna do the oil pan in the morning too. And then uh, that'll be it. All the lifters have been replaced. Those are all the fucking shitty ones right there. I just threw uh, some gasket maker underneath uh, this gasket just to make sure that it is a nice and tight seal. Um, a little bit of extra stuff I'm able to just roll out or uh, just eh, essentially just get rid of. But so she's good. She shouldn't be leaking from up top. So just a little bit of a compression. These guys. This car. This fucking car. Alex thinks that he's gonna come in at eight in the morning and do a turbo swap, but it's gonna get done before he even comes into work. Alex, if you're seeing this, uh, we're not sorry. Uh, sleep in. Whew. All right. If you're redoing your oil pan, you gotta remove the downpipe and you gotta remove your starter, and then you can start taking everything out. Um, be weary. There are two bolts over here that need to be short, otherwise they dig into the timing belt. You don't want that, so make sure uh, and pay attention to which smaller ones come out. So. Oil pan's off. The oil pan. I'm gonna go clean the edges off right here outside real fast. Oil pan's nice and clean. Now we're gonna get rid of all that stuff on the oil pan. Early morning back at the shop. Red Evo's wastegate flange, all fuckered. I'm gonna weld that up, throw that back on. Oil pan is good, valve cover is good. Coiling plug is all on. I'm just gonna do starter plate, starter, downpipe. Kiss right. can, a couple of little lines. I'm gonna get some lines over there. Water pump pulley. These are the old pulleys. Idler pulley is uh, pretty heavy for what it is. Water pump pulley is not so bad. The tensioner arm is fairly heavy. And then with the uh, water pump pulley, the idler pulley, and the alternator tensioner, uh, I think they're like maybe like three or five. It's pretty awesome. Devin's the man. Get up in there real quick. That's, that's where they have that oil shit running in the back. Catch can, uh, lines, everything's all nice and done. Oh, okay. Catch can just mounts right there on the transmission. All right, just got back from uh, Riley's and Domino's. Grab some food. It is uh, it's a nice, uh, no cloudy day here. Ugh. Up in uh, Utah. Um, everything's on. The no AC belt that we have, K060578, that one does not work. Uh, we have the 0569, uh, that one seems to be a little bit loose. So then we have the 59, the 57, the 551, and the 544. One of these belts should work, I'm hoping they do, uh, but we're gonna eat real quick. Na -na 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 -na, fat Bro. man. Good. <laughs> so we had to go back to O'Reilly's uh, K060563. That is the belt we needed uh, with the billet idler pulley. Uh, 
power steering, the oversized water pump, and then the alternator mod. Um, that's what we needed. That's what it should look like. It should not be extended out, you know, very far on both sides. Uh, both sides should have minimal, uh, if anything at all, um, type of stretching or uh, outwards, whatever, whatever it is. Um, there shouldn't be that much you shouldn't have to do. So once it's properly uh, set, you should never have to touch it again. Um, that's a uh, promise from EvoSpec if it's done right. I'm totally stoked. I'm really excited to see what, uh, what this thing does. So those guys all on. That guy's tightened over there. I got my little engine brace right here, which I do actually quite enjoy this thing along with the uh, engine mounts. Um, just make sure the motor isn't going anywhere. This clear uh, cam gear cover, literally like maybe 15 bucks on Amazon. I'm not gonna pay much more than that. Uh, without the filter, she looks bad, man. She looks real bad. Hmm. He goes down, wheels are torqued. I'm gonna unplug the coil unplug setup, unplug my injectors, and then uh, crank the car over a couple times, make sure the lifters are uh, bled before everything goes on.